Moving to the Boston Toronto series. Oh my god! This is when people. Oh, guy, you hate the Leafs. I'll always want the Leafs in the playoffs, just because. Yeah, it, for this, it brings a circus and carnival-like atmosphere. They're going to be great. Uh, they're you know this team's going to be different. It's all going to change. It's all, and it never does. Or it's the they're losers. They'll never win again. Like it's just the most polarizing team in, in yeah. In a- it's burning, hey, in Toronto oh right now. Yeah. Shit's like, on fire. Your living, yeah. You, you heard it was a big market. Now you're starting to yeah. really get the flavor. Like These, Mitch Marner has been traded to every team in the league by now in Toronto. Like, I've seen, yeah, there's all kinds of trade offers out there. I guess uh, yeah. I, I didn't even know if he was going to play. Um, man, man, Matthews oh man, missing it, skate today. He's ill. Um, interestingly, Marchand is as well. It's it, this is a disaster. They they they've looked their worst in the biggest moments. This this franchise with when they with these big four forwards. It's not that they aren't good enough. It's just that when you get late in series and things get a little bit harder and you have to be good, they look listless many times. It's 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 baffling. Um, and look, that's a flawed roster. Their decor sucks. I think they have one top four defenseman. That's insane. They're doing patchwork goaltending. Like, yeah, the D. I mean, man, like I, literally. I did think they have one top four defenseman, Morgan Riley, would, who's, who's playing more than he should. He should be a two, three. And then it's like Benoit and Edmondson and these guys like, no, no, no. Those are third pair guys. Yeah, TJ's not looking. TJ has all these scratch for the first two games, three games of this series. Okay. Giordano's over 40. He's hardly played. Um, you know, I think Timothy Lilligrand is probably a five. They, they don't have more than one top four defenseman. And it's just, it feeds that narrative of like, you got to break up the big four. Um, and, and I think well, in years past that was overblown, but they just, if, if you are one year away from free agency with Mitch Marner, look at your glaring needs on the blue line and in net. And they've just been dry humping the cap for a half decade. If you could turn him into a young defenseman, that's cheap and take some cap space. I, I could understand them doing it. And uh, you can survive with the lineup they have if they get it done and they don't. Do you know what I mean? Like if you're going to have a top four, and they're going to go out and score five a game in the playoffs. Okay, you know maybe you yeah, can survive not you're having right. the D in the yeah. totally. But they don't yeah, do right. that either. You're right. So you're right. it's one or the other. You can't have you can't put your all your eggs in those four guys and say in that basket and say, oh well, we're going to outscore teams. They're not going to be able to handle us offensively. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, hasn't Except been that way. You're not. Scored. Yeah, and if, unfortunate with Nealander being you know the, the the I guess the foggy sort of. Confusion around it. Is it migraines? Is it not? He called it a personal issue. Lots of people reported it's migraines. But, I mean, you could have used them in the first three games where you probably should have been up 2-1 coming out of them. Never mind you didn't have your second best player. And he's clearly that right now. Yeah, because it was last week. Uh, and I I had mentioned, I think we all could. Leafs have played pretty good. This series has been actually a very good series. Self-inflicted wounds. It's not like and, Boston's owned them. And then uh, there was that game, game four, and they, they were not good. Didn't in that game i was going to grab the goals retro just to uh as a veteran nhl defenseman like you are to get your uh your comments and thoughts because it's horrendous at any level the first goal well we've got ryan reeves on the wall with the puck and he's gonna he's gonna lug this thing he's going end to end and joel edmondson is standing in front of the net he's like oh shit this could be some odd man let's go let's get our points here Reeves, mm-hmm. except Reeves turns it over, and, and then it, the James Van Reeves like is alone in front, has enough time to not just shoot it fast. I'm going to stand, take a look, pull backhand, and put it between your legs. Uh, I forget which. I think it was the Pasternak goal where Jake McCabe decides I'm going to lay this guy out. I'm going to. You watch this. This is going to be a heavy, heavy hit, and Broads is left gap control. Lock not of? great. Yeah. yeah. Not not great gap, as they say. And it's in the back of the net. Oh, just watching along on social media that night because they're not playing well. And already critics are on the, the home fans for not being a good enough crowd and not cheering and all that sort of thing. And then they're down. Were they down three nothing in this thing? They got two shots in the first 10 minutes and 28 seconds. <laughs> The goalie gets pulled. Matthews doesn't play the third. They're playing like shit. It, yeah, it was good stuff. It was good stuff for uh, 
to watch the Leaf. No, lots of your Leafs fan, I guess. But if you're, you know, sitting in Calgary and don't really care one way or the other, it was good entertainment. Do you remember yeah. the star of the Christmas show? Uh yeah. Yeah. He, uh, I, I have in the pin report, but this might be the spot in the time. Sure. Mitch Marner has been taking it in the teeth, and our boy Jay Rosehill didn't buck the trend. I, I look at Mitch Marner and, and the breakdown on some of his shifts, and all I can think is, who do you think you are? Are you too good to stop and start? Are you too good to get back? back into your fucking position who do you think you are who do you think you are are you too good to try are are, do you expect everything in your life just to be given to you because your daddy has told you that you're the greatest thing since sliced bread since you were five who do you think you are i watch these shifts you want 14 million dollars a year to play and this is how you show it you just expect everything you just expect everything expect everything to happen you expect everything to be given to you you chicken shit who do you think you are you entitled little prick you don't even have the guts to fucking try because you might try and come up short and fail that's what that shows me you insecure baby. All you do is bitch and float and look around for the easy way to go. I want the easy way. I want it given to me. I want it just to be given to me on a silver platter. I don't want to have to work and I don't want it to be hard because that's what I deserve because I am special. That's pathetic. I don't want this guy on my team. I don't want him near my franchise. So I don't know how glazed Rosie is or where he is, but that's, uh, he wasn't taking the securitous route to get to the Mitch Marner beating. It was a direct right direct hit. Yeah, that was not a uh, stray, stray fire at all. That was, uh, that was, and that's everything. That's what it was. That's the fan base. Like that that's, was, <laughs> you want a little temperature check in Toronto? Yeah. There you are. No, I can't speak for him. I wonder if today he'd be as uh, venomous, if he'd be as haunt about that. But when that game was a disaster because it wasn't just Marner. It was the D. It was the goaltending. Matthews didn't play. They're getting into it on the yeah. bench. And this was this. This is great. This is lip the lip reading oh, on the bench. So you've got, as you can see, there's. There's Austin, who is not, not right. He's playing through illness. Yeah. Feels over. He's like, what? what, what are, you know, he's complaining and about something that's got, happened on uh, the ice. And then there's <laughs> Nylander. <laughs> Stop fucking crying, bro. This ain't it's Junior. Not leaping Junior. <laughs> and then he slams his gloves. And Bertuzzi's like, whoa. Having a fit. And well. Nylander Stop bleeping crying, bro. It's not back for one here. game. Yeah. Back, Willie Styles. It's broken, Rhett. You don't mind teammates getting into it and that sort of thing, but this has gone on for so long. And it's it, it's not been easy when you have that many guys making that much money and all that. You can't just, oh, we'll just shake it up. They You have to wait until contracts get to a certain point. And with Marner, I think they're there. Next year. Um, so for living has some work to do, but it's a broken team. It is. It doesn't look like a cohesive unit. I, I always worry because you'd always heard rumors and rumblings about Marner's old man and this and that. And it's like, is it all this kid's fault? Like it, it feels like it has been handed to him on a silver platter in a way. But on the other hand, I think he's had someone in his back or is in his, in his ear hole yeah. uh, bitching at him his whole life. So, is there a true passion for the game? I don't know. And that's uh, for parents listening. It's a fine line between these kids watching a, an Instagram or a TikTok video of uh, what's the move behind the net? Uh, Michigan. The Michigan and a dangle and a this and that. And, and them wanting to play hockey. Right? Like, I think Marner, who's the guy in Anaheim? Zegers. I think there's a lot of kids out there 
ultra talented, beyond talented, stunningly talented, don't have a effing clue about how to play hockey or win a hockey or be a good teammate. Yeah. Sorry. I just got a text from a uh, an agent. 16 players from, I want to get it right, 16 players. It's weird I'm talking about this, but it, 16 players from the uh, the 16-year-old AAA St. Louis Junior Blues program have left the Blues program to go play the same level hockey somewhere else. Point is, kids, parents, all of us, we're always looking for something better, right? And something easier. We're trying to assist them. Maybe we just need to teach them to bear down and help the team they're with. I don't know. And I, and I think Marner's been that forever. I think he's a talented individual, but he doesn't have a clue about being a teammate. Yeah. Well, and look, I, I feel for Mitch Marner because he didn't ask for his dad to do the things his dad does. No. He can't control that. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if that if he was a very helpful piece on a championship caliber team. It's just not with this one, and it might not be in his home market where he can't go out and – have a normal day. He might like be imagine this off. guy in Utah. Like he yeah. could be an absolute star. He's had 100 point seasons. Yeah. Like uh, there's totally a lot agree. of teams that would love hey. Mitch Marner. This is a tough, tough. This is the the hardest market for him to play in in the world is Toronto. Some of these guys got to be number one too, and he ain't number one. No, and he's not there. But it's just if, if, we we've talked about it with other guys in smaller circumstances. But sometimes there's just a situation that screams change of like change of scenery, and this is one for me. Fresh start. The other thing is too, when you're when you're at that high level of skill, it usually brings with it a uh, a paycheck, and uh, yeah, expectations. So you've got a, that, right? You know the the offensive numbers in the regular season would indicate and suggest that he's he's got to be paid a certain a certain dollar figure. But with the cap, you need that person to be a difference maker. If oh. you're paying them north of ten, you can't have them being a support guy a la Phil Kessel in Pittsburgh or whatever. Yeah. That's harder to happen when it's a 10, 11 million dollar player. And to be fair, like he's been a very good 10 to 11 million dollar player in the regular season, but this year was not his best year and the playoffs haven't matched up to the regular seasons. Um he's a very good hockey player. It's it's not he's a very and, skilled hockey player. Very well, and I, look, I'm just saying, like, yeah. we will paint this guy as you're not you can't win with this guy, but we've painted a lot of guys like that that have gone on to win he needs to go to a new place in a different setup. It's not working there for him. And uh, honestly, the coach is taking a lot of heat here too. And, and rightfully so Sheldon Keith got an extension before this year. That doesn't even kick in until next year. A little bit odd. Uh, teams often aren't afraid to have the last year lame duck thing on the head coach, but you know, w would I be surprised if Mitch Marner was a contributing part of a championship team? No, but it's not happening there. It's like there, there's just too many reasons it's not. It's the family. It's the hometown. It's the cap issues. It's their glaring needs elsewhere on the roster. It's the last year of a deal where he's going to ask for huge amounts of money. It's not happening there. And it's him. Yeah, of course. You, you yeah, don't I'm not get absolving him for all those. Much, but, yeah, it can be all of the above. And yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, it's it's exactly what people said about Phil Kessel when he was in Toronto, right? Like that's what I'm saying is uh, you said you can't win with him. He's not a leader, blah, 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 three cups later. But he just but he wasn't a better leader spot. on those teams either. Correct. And I'm not saying Mitch is going to be on his next either, but it's it, we're saying the same thing. Like, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to learn to win somewhere totally else. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I guess the point is, where's where is that team? Where is that fit that can pay him the money that he wants, but be able to put him in a role You're where tough. he isn't the, you know, <laughs> right? Do you know what I mean? What? Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Utah. Like, there's a bunch. I mean, Vegas, Utah, Carolina, the Islanders. Like, there's lots of places where what he does would be massively coveted, and they don't have to build a culture around him being the leader. Um, and you need to have cap space. You need to have the want for an offensive star, and you need to have the pieces that theoretically would be traded back to Toronto. It's it's complicated. He also has a full no move, which makes it really hard for Treliving. Um if he wants to, he can just say, nope, I'm not going anywhere and walk to free agency. He can literally tie the GM's hands, which I don't think would be in his best interest, but it's just underlying how complicated this one's going to be. You wonder what he's closer to saying. 
I'm not moving anywhere. I'm playing it out and then I'm walking or I'm not playing for this team again. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like what's, well, and then there's the agent, right? Where if you're looking at leverage and trying to maximize earnings and all that, I mean, I don't know. It's, Jeez. it's a tough 10, spot. 10.9. And he'll be asking what, for more is what he makes. He's going to yeah. want to raise. I was looking, he, not, I'm not looking to be the guy, uh, has not quite hit a hundred. He had a 99, a 97 and a 94 point season. He's been well over a point a game. In each of the last six years, he's wow. 26 years old. And for as awful as he is in the playoffs, he's got 49 points in 54 playoff games. It's the results that really are, are the, the mark. It's not, it's not the, helped not the team player. win. Yeah, and no one on that team has, right, Red? It's just a group that hasn't been able to get over the hump. They have one series win in nine years. Like, what the fuck are we talking about yeah. here? That's a disaster. If you want to talk about flaws, going and signing the captain when they did instead of pursuing a defenseman as a free agent. That Tavares? might, you know, it was a nice story. John Tavares, all yep. that sort of thing. Nice story, but you didn't need that player. You didn't yep. need that it's guy. Such a waste. Yep. Well, right? and and the, 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 we keep forgetting, like the environment that they signed Tavares in was a cap that was growing pretty regularly every year. Like no one saw five, six years of flat cap. And that's really screwed the least more than anyone because they, sort of factored in cap growth with all these deals on, you know, Matthews and Marner, the Nylander holds out till the end of November, that one contract. But even then it, but even then it was 11 million a year. Yeah, right? yeah it's too it's much. not a hometown discount. No, not at yeah. all. But for no, a guy that the parent loved, get, would, yeah. right? Like you didn't. He's up at the end of next year as well. It's yeah. a really, really interesting spot for true living yeah. because you could easily say, you know what? If, I, if this isn't Toronto and this isn't the craziest hockey market ever, I'm going to take a year and just move around parts and then operate with massive cap space in two years when dry saddle and a bunch of other studs are up. But I don't know that you have the patience for that in Toronto. If they were like, yeah, yeah we're just going to reset for a year. We need to, we'll move Marner for some young cost controlled defensemen. We'll address our net mining issues and we'll bank some cap space for the next summer. Like, I just don't know that you can do that in Toronto. How much, I mean, are the I, Flames I, interested in a guy like Marner? Like if if Mark he'd have to wave to come here, but I you would he'd be the most talented player they have, no question. If you're interested in Zegris, you'd have to like Marner more than him. Yeah, I mean, there it's all those layers, it's money, it, right? right? If you take all of it away, from, uh, would you would you want him? Yeah, yeah, sure, you sure would. You would yeah. But he's but there's salary cap, and he's got a wave. And I heard you say Markstrom. Well, he's got a wave to go to Toronto or. Um, but it's all world skill. He's one of the most skilled players in the world. Yeah, for Mister hasn't done it in the playoffs. Like you noted, that he's like what 0. 0.8 points per game. That's twenty six. Did you say twenty six? Twenty six years old. Pretty young man. Yeah, yeah, you could sign a guy up to have him twenty seven to thirty three ish. Like that's still a lot of good years in there for a guy that moves like he does. The other thing, and I, I don't pretend to know. I do wonder how how well he gets along in the locker room with guys. That he's would be my very idea. prickly, you know, and it's because he's been roasted over and over again by the media. He's the whipping boy but there, yeah. He's you know, he's very prickly with the media. You don't know what how well liked he is. Because if he's viewed as this spoiled young brat, whatever, in the room by some of the guys, then that's trouble. And I would guess the GMs are going to be doing all kinds of intel to find out what the mood is about him as a person. You kind of know what he is as a player, and you feel like, well, we can work with that. We can inside our system, our mm -hmm. hockey development, we can we can work with that. But what is this guy? And again, it goes back to the original point. It, it looks like he grew up in a very tough environment where it was playing hockey. Hockey was the most important thing in the world. And there's some videos, and of course, they're cropping up on the weekend of dad wearing a mic, standing along the glass, yelling at the kid, talking to him in the car ride home, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's, he didn't pick that. Yeah, it's you, you almost you, you kind of feel for the guy because to your point, Rhett, he looks like a hockey player who doesn't love playing hockey. Not right now. Yeah, when the going, he's talent. Like I said, extremely talented, and when it's just when you can wheel around and the the, the heat's off, yeah, he can do everything. That's the hardest market to play in for most players, not all, but especially given the family, the hometown, and the last eight years. That it that would be the most difficult place in the NHL for Mitch Marner to play, and that doesn't that's not taking him off the hook, Rhett. 
but you would understand if he looked better elsewhere at this point. I think lots of guys can get traded and look better. Absolutely. It's, it's awesome. just like that. The expectations that follow you with everything we just mentioned, it's you have to like watch. There's more you pressure have, there than anywhere else yeah, in the league for him. But what the fuck? What's pressure? Well, some guys won't go there. And it's like, oh, you're pro well, athlete. You're making I don't, some guys yeah, are like, I I'm not going to Toronto no matter what. Like, it's on my no trade list. I'm not going there. Yeah, that's, we all assume that. We all think that. If you're a, ask Rosie what it's like to play for the Leafs. Well, he loved it. Yeah. You have everything at your fingertips. And well, it's the biggest hockey man in the world. You want to be a god? Yeah, win there. You, Seriously. Like, did Wendell Clark, was it too much pressure? No, it wasn't. Oh, that's what made him special, Doug right? Doug Gill, Doug Gill uh, too much prep. Yeah. I just, I get, I understand your point to it, mm -hmm. but if you're not, if you're burning desires not to walk down Young Street with the cu cup over your head as a Leafs fan growing up, then yeah. you're a shitty, you're not, it's not pressure. You have to want to do it yourself. It's, it's I, just I, a circus. Like I remember when Steven Stamkos was the free agent and he did the tour. What he looked mean, under the hood it, in Toronto. He would have had the same money after tax, if not more. They were offering huge dough. And he was like, it's going to happen. It's going to be Stamkos in Toronto. And then all of a sudden, it's like, you know what? It's a fucking zoo here. Like, no, I'm yeah, going to stick I, where I can win. And I don't want to have to deal with the fucking circus. I like, you can't just write that off. You can't, but uh, I don't know if it's, it's... I don't think that's the only thing either. Do you like going no. to the beach, Steve? Like, do you oh, he had a enjoy great warm yeah. weather? Why did Getzlav stay in Anaheim? Because the pressure was too much up north? No. Like, yeah, it's part of it, but it's not. 2003, 2004, Red Mile. Mm -hmm. How's the town? The best. Lit How's up. the pressure? Why is what, What's the pressure like? Stay can I up. walk out? Can I walk around? Can Jerome McGinley walk down the street? Can can Kami go down to can Jer Marty Jelena? How's the pressure? Well, I, mean, I, I don't know. That, like, are you saying the, how much chaos is? There's lots, but that team was playing with house money right from the drop well, of the bucket. Well, well, why There's is no it? Why? Why you assume it's house money? Because your assumption was that we don't. I want to win a fucking no, Stanley no, no. Cup. You're asking me about my the pressure. pressure is the, the same pressure as as his pressure should be. I want right. to win the cup. Yeah. I want to win the cup. I couldn't walk around Calgary. What difference is if you can't walk around Calgary or Edmonton or Vancouver? Why is Toronto special? Yeah, no, I'm just saying the circumstance is different that everyone loved that team and you weren't even supposed to be a playoff. You and you know, this is a decade love. of failure. You're in charge of making them love you. That's I've told this cheese ball story. I used to come over the hill on McLeod Trail, get to the top of the hill, mm -hmm. and there was a city, and I would have like a little I'm going to fucking Moment. make this town yeah. proud of how I play. Yeah. Like, that's not pressure. That's want. And if Marner doesn't want it, and I'm not saying he doesn't, but you can't excuse failure because there's too much pressure. No, no, no. My kids, oh, if it was pressure. Fuck that pressure. Mm -hmm. You want it. That's not pressure. If you want something, why is it pressure? The greats can deal with it. I'll give you that. Like, no question. Yeah, I I, just, and you know what, retro, I, you're you're. I would say it's fair to say you're built different than than Mitch. Martin. I wouldn't put you too. And, and I'm not. That's the, the, I'm not letting him off the hook. I just think it's you know you you're you're that kind of guy. You can handle the pressure. Let's go into battle. Some guys, because I was just thinking, Mitch Marner, you've made fifty two million dollars or whatever. Imagine how good life would be for him if you want to go and play in Davos, Switzerland, make some money, tax free, sure. free car. No one's hitting you. You can dangle all day long. You'd love being a hockey player. You'd love the game. I just don't think he loves the NHL all the time. When it's and hard. Totally, and then the criticism is deserved. Yeah. And you I, can't blame it on pressure. It's not, and I, and we can, we're talking, I think this is the right word. Semantics. Is that, yeah. We're, we're, we're debating semantics. I don't know what it means. Has he been good enough? Really, no. Would it could it work elsewhere? Yeah. Probably easier elsewhere. Are yeah. you believing that this is a great leader of men? No, I'm not. Is he a great hockey player? Yeah, there's a lot of great skills there. I mean, it's complicated. If the rest of the team was maybe built a little differently, totally. better than yes. then it's different for him too. Yes, but it's if not. they could have Charlie McAvoy and Hampus Lindholm back there, they're up in yeah. this series. Like because be you can go here. this summer if you're a living and you can make a Mitch Marner trade, but it's not like okay, well, now it's fixed. 
now now we're <laughs> two three rounds deep every year no 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 that's it's part of them it's on the checklist i would suggest uh beyond that now and, and again I, what about nylander he has just signed a big money long-term deal. You have to keep Austin Matthews. He's the greatest goal scorer in the friggin' world. Yes. But your D is a mess. Your goaltending is average at to best. very good at depending on the day. But uh the the Bruins have just looked so good in this series. Much like Col not to the Colorado extent against Winnipeg, no, but the Bruins Colorado have looked here. like a cohesive that that's a team. They're that's a team that's kind of built right. One team watch. looks like they've been there before, right? They're like, very oh, we know how to do this. Yeah, we're there's, here. And they're, they're very comfortable. They're very comfortable. They're wounds and mistakes. And, ah, oh, this is too big for us. We can't handle this. Yeah. Uh, Brad Marchand. Goal and an assist. Passed Cam Neely for most playoff goals by a Bruin with 56. He's seen some winning there, eh? He has eight points in the four games. Swayman. Second uh, straight start made 24 stops. They did alternated from the alternating. They, yeah, they've alternated. From there. <laughs> the Leafs have lost six straight playoff home games and, oh. have score, and have scored more than two goals once in their last 11 playoff. Games. And this is where I'm like, stop telling the fans how to react. This isn't like yeah. a first time fan base watching a team. Like, if you trust me, if you'd been to three Eastern Conference finals in the last eight years, they cheer differently. And you know what? They, they've crazy. seen this group fuck them before. <laughs> They're don't tell the fans how to react to a team that can't win at home. Six in a row losses at home over two goals once. Boo if you want. Yeah. Your job's not to be up and beat the Bruins. That's the players. And if you're seeing a, a habit of a team that can't play in big spots, you've paid the money to do what you want to do there. Maybe the fans need to put out some videos on social media where they get, you know, pick a player and really Ask. get behind them. You know, put their virtual arms around him, show him some love. Maybe that, maybe that's what's missing. Because I'm not seeing a lot of that right now. For hey, yeah. Mitch, we we got your back, buddy. I think We're putting hands on him was more the ro rosy take rather yeah. than hand, arms Something around like him. That was uh, a beatdown. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out more of our content right here on the Flames Nation YouTube page. We had a bunch of great long form interviews. You can check out some videos we've done as well outside of the studio. And of course, if you want more writing or merchandise stuff, flamesnation.ca or nationgear.ca. Appreciate you watching.